When it comes to women and elective office, the city of Boston has made significant progress over the last 10 years. Nationally, well, after history was made four years ago, there may or may not be a woman on any national ticket on November 3rd. Your thoughts? I don't believe the reason that a person should be on a major party ticket be whether or not they are from a particular sex or gender. I think the qualification of a person is more important than anything else. Uh, you're, you know, if if you're a woman, it doesn't mean that you're going to do anything better than a man if a man is on the ticket or in office. Mm -hmm. There's nothing guaranteed. You know, everybody else has their chances. And this is America. There should be a woman long time ago. I think it's great to have diversity uh, from all classes and, and races and, uh, and genders. I'm more so looking at actually what the candidate stands for, mm -hmm. um, not necessarily their gender. It's important. It's important. Not at all. Not at all. No. no. Competency is common to both genders. Love diversity, love to have a woman, love to have one of everybody, but I just want the best candidate. So at that point, our Sunday roundtable is assembled. We're joined this morning by Democratic political analyst Marianne Mars, Republican political analyst Rob Gray. Great to have you with us, guys. Here we go. So Elizabeth Warren's Super Tuesday performance, I think, was much more dismal than any of us around this table thought a week ago. Um, why did her campaign implode? Was it circumstances beyond her control? And or did she make some critical mistakes? Let's start with you, Marianne. I, I think there are two elements here. One is society and one with strategy. Society is just not ready to vote for a woman for president. We all know it. If you're a woman, you know you're a second class citizen. But voters of color and women decided that the most important thing is to stop Donald Trump. And the person to do that was Joe Biden based on his performance, which is in South Carolina, which is why he ran the table. His firewall became spontaneous combustion. That's how we won Super Tuesday. Second, Strategically, Elizabeth Warren never went after Bernie Sanders. In fact, she didn't really do it till Saturday night, and you had to be watching C-SPAN to see it, which I did. She had her best line against Bernie Sanders that night, which is, for everything Bernie supports, he's never gotten it done, and everything he's opposed, he's never stopped. She needed to make that case against Bernie Sanders the way she did with Bloomberg, maybe a little gentler to keep his supporters, but she never did it. Those were the two reasons why she's not in the race and today. And C-SPAN is really not exactly, you know, right, widely right, seen by right, a lot of people. Right. Desperate people like me, Turner. <laughs> because everyone else dumped her on her speech. Did she make any critical mistakes, though, on top of everything that Marianne just spoke of, uh, Rob? Well, here's why the wheels came off the Prius of Elizabeth Warren, right? <laughs> oh, it, it, it was bad candidate skills and a bad strategy. She didn't come in uh, better than third in the first 18 states. And she just, as Marianne said, she, did, she targeted Bloomberg in a debate when she should have been targeting Bernie. There's a reason that these races aren't run on paper, that we don't just elect people based on how they poll. Everybody said she was the favorite going in, but over the course of actual elections where people went out and vote, she was not convincing enough for people to was pull the, the lever was the, for her. Was That's the, the bottom line. Was, was the third place finish in Massachusetts the straw that broke the camel's back? No, I think it's because everyone's been waiting for someone to show that they're the person who can take on Donald Trump. Joe Biden did that with his win in South Carolina. Elizabeth Warren never had that moment. She either needed a win yeah. or to accumulate enough yeah. delegates to say, you can yeah. beat him. And is, people is, were saying that, right? Yeah. Like, they're, they're saying to themselves, I can't see her up against Donald Trump in a debate in the fall, so I'm not going to vote is, for her because I want to Is VP out of the question him. for right. her? Well, I, I think there are long odds. I mean, uh, certainly w whether it's Bernie or Biden, they're going to need to balance their ticket, right. and, and she would certainly fit the bill there. But I don't think she has any leverage with, with Biden or anybody mm -hmm. else here to, mm -hmm. to make that deal, and I think there'll be somebody else mm -hmm. that they can choose to balance the ticket who's better than her. I wouldn't rule it out. I mean, she could, if she went with Biden, she could bring progressives with her. I also wouldn't rule out a cabinet position. You could see her as Secretary mm -hmm. of Treasury or something, mm -hmm. and, and, that, and she would have a lot of clout there. So uh, TBD on that. So let's turn our attention to Joe Biden. Can he hold on to his party establishment strategy to contain Sanders? Can the moderates do what the Republicans could not to stop Donald Trump four years ago, Rob? Well, you have to give the Biden campaign and the National Democratic Party uh, credit because they pulled off a pretty tricky maneuver uh, between uh, South Carolina and, and Super Tuesday where they got Buttigieg, Klobuchar and Beto O'Rourke in Texas all to endorse Biden within 24 hours, two of them pulling out of the race. So yes, I, I think that they, they probably can, but you know, the most likely result here is that no majority 
uh, goes that we go to the convention with no majority of delegates. Uh, do you agree with that, Marianne? Well, look, I, I think the establishment here is now you know, African-American voters and women. I mean, Jim Clyburn's the MVP, but for South Carolina, this doesn't get put into motion. And, I, and you have to look at it that way because African-American voters and women in particular broke turnout records on Tuesday in ways we haven't seen, even though they had to stand in line for five to seven hours. Yeah. So he's broken the turnout records. Joe Biden has. Sanders has not. Yeah. We learned Tuesday that Sanders has a ceiling. So let's, let's talk about the guy in the White House right now. And meanwhile, down at the White House at 1600 Pennsylvania, President Trump has been weighing in every step of the Democrats' journey to finding someone to run against him. I'm going to ask it simply like this, Marianne. How happy is the president? Well, he wants chaos, but he wants Bernie Sanders more. And you know that from his tweets. You know, he's, he's trying to get everyone that's rigged, poor Bernie, it's being taken away from him again. He wants to face Bernie Sanders, and I think voters know that. He wants to sow chaos, and I think people are a little more smart this time. What do you think, Rob? Mary, it's right. I mean, the longer this goes on, the happier Trump is. But at the end of it, he really wants Bernie. You know, he can attack Bernie as a socialist. More than 60 percent of Americans say they would never vote for a socialist. Obviously, he he took a lot of risk going after Joe Biden with the Ukraine, and there's a reason for that. I, he fears Joe Biden. And Burisma's back. So uh, really quickly, <laughs> do you think we're going to have to wait until the end of April to find out if there's going to be a broker convention or not? Probably. No one's going to. I'm not sure anyone's going to get there. Uh, probably, probably so. I mean, the, the landscape's a little bit better for Biden, so he, he might put right. it away. Right. Yeah. We continue on the record. Stay with us.